this is Hallowell Jones Stadium, our iconic battleground. We have gathered 12 Saxon warriors from around the country, ready to fight for what will be England's strongest man 2022 in the home of the great Warrington Wolves. Who will be king of the pack? Well, we'll soon see. Well, here we are at the home of the Warrington Wolves and it is the biggest ever England's Strongest Man, part of the UK's Strongest Man Tour. Well, ahead we have 12 athletes and Paul Smith, this man, is UK's Strongest Man. He'll be looking to take his second title of the year. Newcomer Josh Norton, not much known about him. What's he going to be able to do? Andy Flynn, the flying Flynn, one of the hot favourites. And Dan Cave, deadlift specialist, his first time at this competition. Lewis Packham, the finalist at UK Strongest Man, one of the breast pressers in the country. And junior UK Strongest Man champion, Joe Oliver. Ellis Vine. First time out on the professional circuit. Mason Fessy, his first time too. What can he do? And dancing Dan Hewson, the crowd favourite. Watch out for him. John Ford, powerlifter. And last minute replacement, Dean Evans, one of the best deadlifters in the country. Joined alongside Joe Bromley, also a late replacement. Well, this is going to be some battle. It's the farmer's walk, 150 kilograms in each hand. And it's a little bit different this time around. Normally, it's a 20-metre course. It's 30 metres, so uh, it's a little bit longer. I'm not sure anyone's going to finish it. Dan Hewson, 32 years old, a whopping 160 kilograms. And lastly, Josh Norton, 27 years old. Packed house here today, and referee Terry Hollands get proceedings underway. And it's Dan Hewson who's got problems, needing some more chalk. But Lewis Packham down very early, less than seven metres, I think, maybe just over. But Ellis Vine's going to win this heat. Can he get to the end? No, he can't. But that is a really respectable start. So Dan Cave, 32 years old, like many strongmen, they often look older. Joe Oliver, just 20 years old, youngest competitor here and really is a strongman for the future. And this is the man they're all going to be looking at. You heard it, it's the current UK strongest man, Paul Smith. Mason Fessy, 140 kilograms, six foot one. So, well, they know what they've got to be, just over 17 metres by Ellis Vine. Dan Cave going well, but drops, and Joe Oliver's not even get started. But Paul Smith looks like he's smiling, absolutely ripping it down the course. I'm not sure he's going to finish, but that's over 20 metres, and that will put Paul Smith in first place. What a great start for UK's strongest man. Paul, as current UK strongest man, do you think there's a little bit more pressure on you today? Yeah, definitely. You know, obviously you win the big title, so you come to these shows and everyone's looking at you. I do feel like there's a target on my back, but I like a bit of pressure. And the first event, how did that go for you? It went pretty well. It's always a good event for me, farmers. My grip did feel amazing, but it looks like a lot of lads are struggling, so hopefully that distance holds out. And what are your predictions for the rest of the competition? Well, hopefully that I, I made the title. <laughs> good for you. Uh, good luck and congratulations with today's event. Thank you very much. 
So final heat of this farmer's walk. John Ford, 38 years old, one of the eldest competitors here. And this event will suit Andy Flynn. He absolutely loves any athletic strength event, so watch out for him. Dean Evans, 155 kilograms, one of the heavier guys here. And in the fourth lane, it's Joe Bromley. Well, they know what they've got to beat. And there's a big advantage in going last. You get to see what the previous guys have done. And look at Andy Flynn go. He's got 21.22 metres to beat. Ellis Fine second at the moment in 18.25 metres. But Andy Flynn is living up to his nickname, Flying Flynn. Look at the face. Oh, he just fell short. That is an incredible run, just over 27 metres. Well, he set an early marker by taking the first win there. He'll be very happy with that. Andrew Flynn, the flying Flynn, oh, yes. living up to your name, flying down the course of those yeah. farmers' walks. Is that normally a good event for you? Yeah, farmers' good event for me. Those gas bottles are horrendous. Really? So the first couple of steps was like, oh. But as soon as they balanced, I felt like I was like, right, go. And it's just a case of going, but then I think, I just tripped up at the end. And it's a real split field today. You've got some of the athletes absolutely not getting them off the ground. Some of them, obviously, like you, flying away with them. Yes. What's the technique? <laughs> Grip it, rip it and go. But I mean, it's 300 kilos off the floor. It's quite a low pickup. Not many used to that. And the handles are not knurled. They're stuff like solid. So it's complete, it's, it's the blend equipment is different. Yeah. Well, you've just taken the first event. Well done. And here's to the next, next event in the big competition. Thank you very much. Well, confirmation of the results and the bottom six, it was Joe Bromley of 6.78 metres, but three men failed to get it off the ground. But at the top of the leaderboard, it's Andy Flynn who will take the maximum 12 points just ahead of event favourite Paul Smith. So the first of five events in this competition is down and so far no surprises have been thrown up. So now on to the block press medley and this is a brutal event. Five blocks ranging from 80 to 120 kilograms have to be lifted above the head but it's so awkward. And you're going to see this here. It's not an event they get much opportunity to do, so they'll be trying to figure it out as they go along. So, Dan Hewson, nearest to you, really struggling there. Mason Fessy just looked at the referee, wasn't given the lift. He's got to reset it and go again. And Dan Hewson successfully lifts the first block, 80 kilograms. Now onto the white 90 kilogram block. Mason Fessy did a much better job there. And you can see Dan Hewson leaning back, almost trying to bench press it. Still smiling as he goes. 100 kilograms. Mason Fessy just behind him. Another successful lift for him. So two blocks each, but it's all down to who lifts the heaviest block in the fastest time. And it looks like Dan Hewson may have hit a wall. You can see how awkward it is, but what a good lift by Mason Fessy. He's really starting to get to grips with the equipment now. One hundred and ten kilograms. An absolutely huge weight, and he made it, made it look easy. It looks like they're getting easier as he goes along. But Dan Houston, all oh, balancing on his head. I don't want to be doing that. There's only 75 seconds, so it looks like time has gone, and poor Mason Fessy did not get an opportunity to lift that heaviest block, but that's going to take some beating. Mason, you have just done four blocks. Yeah. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> I've got the damage done. I messed up on the first one, but if I could have had a bit more time, I think I would have got that last block easy, but I'm happy with what I did. It looked like you were really bench pressing it. Is that what you were doing? Yeah, it's all about strict pressing, getting the arch on the back, but 
I said I'm just a bit, a bit uh, mad about the time, but I'm happy. Well, it looked fantastic, <laughs> and I hope it's a really it's good enough time to uh, to get you into Thank the you. podium. So Dan Cave currently sixth with seven points after the first event. He'll be looking to better that and get himself up the table. And Josh Norton just one point ahead of him. Well, they know what the target is. It's 64.58 seconds on block four. So watch that timer as the two athletes move along. Dan Cave, yep, gets the down signal from the referee, moves on to the 90 kilogram block. Josh Norton just taking things a little bit easier. You can just see how difficult it is to get that block into a position to press. Yeah, he's given the lift, moves on to the third block. Josh Norton just behind him, looked very solid there. We have seen previously the athletes getting better as they move along, despite the heavier weight. He's figuring out the balance here. And Dan Cave just trying to work that third block up. It's not looking like it's in a good position. And Josh Norton moves ahead of him. And Dan Cave really struggling to lock out there, not getting the lift. Josh Norton moving on to the fourth block. Is he going to beat the time set by Mason Fessy? I don't think he is. But a good lift here will definitely put him up in the points. And the whistle has gone, so once again, just beaten by the timer. Good effort by Josh Norton. Josh, you nearly got four. Yeah. Uh, it was just on the whistle. Did it get easier as the blocks got heavier? Oh, yeah, definitely. That first one was horrible. Really horrible. It's just too small. Can't get my hands under it. But as soon as it got through the stages, I think I just needed to... There's a little bit less time thinking about it, yep. more time doing it. So, do you think that you've done enough to keep you at the top of the tree on this one? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I just got every every event 100%, and then just all I can ask for. I hope you have. Let's see what the rest of the event brings. Thank you. Well, that performance puts Josh Norton currently second, but this man, Lewis Packham, all eyes will be on him. An unbelievable presser. Well, Ellis Vine off to a really strong start after the first event, currently third with a whopping 10 points. Now, both athletes will have been looking at what happened previously, just trying to figure things out, looking at what the technique was like. And look how easy Lewis Packham made that. So Lewis Packham just getting himself set again, and he lifts it so effortlessly, those huge shoulders. The world's strongest barber, incidentally. He's a barber by trade, and that's the nickname that he likes. Ellis Vine really, really struggling. Packham just trying to find his balance, almost falling backwards. You would not want that 100 kilogram weight falling on you, but he gets that one up, moves on to the fourth, Looks like he's going to beat the time set by Mason Fessy. But Ellis Vine having an absolute disaster. So block number four beats Mason Fessy's time, moves into the lead, strides over to the final block, 120 kilograms. Look how far up he is, but he's running out of time. Can he do it? Literally three seconds. It's not going to happen. And this 75 second time limit is so cruel, but he's very, very happy with that. Lewis Packham moves into the lead. That was unbelievably close. Do you think you would have got it had you got a little I bit I think I would have pressed the last one. Um, it's a lot wider than the other one, so when you go to pick it up, it really does catch you out. Um, I'm confident in my shoulder power, so the minute it's there, I know it's going up. But... You are one of the best pressers in the UK at the moment. How does this compare to normal pressing? Um, there's a lot of carryovers with long press. The hip power to get the block up, being able to control your glutes, all of that power from your glutes that comes up, keeping your head through and having the experience to listen to the ref 
for the down signal as well. A lot of lads rush it and they end up doing it twice. Well, so. let's see if you've done enough to get a podium finish on this event. Thank you very much. Well, one man who will have been watching Lewis Packham very closely is Paul Smith, currently in second place. He knows what he's got to do. Block four, 57.95 seconds is the time to beat. Andy Flynn, well, currently first, but I think he's going to find this one difficult. He's definitely a moving event expert. Static strength, not quite his forte. So 75 seconds, the time limit, remember? Oh, Paul Smith really struggled there. Lost balance, but managed to recover. Now, Paul Smith's done this before. It was in the UK Strongest Man final. It was actually this event that saw him take the win. So he's well used to it, and I'd expect him to do pretty well here. The question is, is he going to be able to beat the time set by Lewis Packham? I'm not so sure. But he has got that third block up in about 33 seconds. Fifty-seven point nine five was the time set by Lewis Packham here, so it looks to me like if he can get to grips with it, he'll take the event win, and he does. Just under fifty-three seconds, and you can see he's taking things very easily. He's a very, very smart guy, Paul Smith. He'll have calculated what he needs to do. I don't even think he's going to bother with the last one, or is he? No, <laughs> he's, he tried to move it and thought, no, that's enough. But Andy Flynn, well, he's hit a brick wall as well. Whistle goes and Paul Smith gets one over Andy Flynn. And I think that'll be enough. You got four blocks. You were five seconds in front of second place. You took that for a win. How is it for you, that normal event normally? It's normally a good event. I've done it before at UK's. Um, so I've seen, I've seen the blocks. I've felt the blocks. I saw everyone go out. So I had a bit of an advantage knowing what, what I had to aim for. And the last block at the end, did you want to attempt it or was it a game plan? I would have gone for it, but I was pretty sure. He said 15 seconds left after a few seconds. I thought I'd done enough and I didn't want to hurt myself trying to do something I don't need to do. You are looking very consistent today, Paul. I hope you get to keep this up. Well, thank you very much. So in the block press medley, Dan Hewson, a good performance from him, seventh place just ahead of Daniel Cave, but Joe Bromley and John Ford failed to make a single lift. But the business end is the top of the table and Paul Smith just edging out Lewis Packham by five seconds with that massive 110 kilogram block. Well, there's two events down, and how does the leaderboard look? At the bottom of the table, poor John Ford failing to score a single point. Seventh place, Joe Oliver, UK Strongest Man Junior Champion. I think we can expect more from him in this competition. But at the top, it's Paul Smith, who is now two points clear of Andy Flynn, with Lewis Packham in third, and that could well be the fight for podium. Well, a monster tyre it is. 400 kilograms, that massive tyre you see behind Dan Cave. And as with the farmer's walk, it's a 30 metre course, so it's got to be flipped 30 metres. These guys are used to 20, so this is going to take some doing. And the crowd favourite, Dan Hewson. Always got a big smile. So referee gets proceedings underway. Again, 75 seconds. And it's Dan Cave actually looking very, very comfortable, driving hard with his shoulders. This is an event where you see them start off relatively slowly and they try and build momentum, which is what Dan Cave is doing now. You can see the sheer effort in his face. It's a dangerous event. Many, many years ago, uh, world's strongest man Gary Taylor dropped the tyre on his leg and completely shattered it. So don't think this isn't dangerous. It really is. And look at the footwear. Dan Cave wearing rugby boots, which is a really, really smart move. He's on a rugby pitch, and it's that extra grip which we can really help. It'll be interesting to see whether many other athletes have picked up on that one. 
He's still going very, very well indeed. 75 second time limit and he's approaching that end of the course, maybe another eight, nine meters to go. Two to three flips. Can Dan Kay finish the course and set himself up very nicely for the event? Oh, he's really struggling. Is he going to do it? Time's running out, Dan. He's going to get it over. Oh, he just beats the timer. What a performance. And I tell you what, that is going to be hard to beat. He looks absolutely exhausted. Yeah. What is your secret? What where? <sighs> Aggression. And just keep repeating, keep repeating, breathe as best you can. Good choice of footwear. Is it because you knew you were on a rugby pitch? Yeah. That's very clever, Dan. I really hope that that is going to be the winning time today because you deserve that. Just to be a genius footwear. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Joe Oliver, what can you do here? Looks focused, doesn't he? And Josh Norton alongside him. What a great competition he's having. Fourth overall with 16 points. So Joe Oliver looking very, very strong. Not much separating them. He's looking very, very comfortable so far. Just getting to grips with this. It's all about getting your hands underneath, driving your shoulders in, almost like a rugby move, and pushing forward with the feet. I'm not sure Joe Oliver's wearing the rugby boots that we saw with Dan Cave, which definitely gave him advantage in terms of having a really, really strong drive up through the legs. But he's doing well so far. Not as quick as Dan Cave, it has to be said. But Josh Norton is really struggling there at the back of your screen as Joe Oliver keeps moving forward. Still got plenty of time. Crowd very appreciative. Maybe another couple of flips, Joe. And this should put him right up there now. If he can just finish this, can he finish it? He does, he does. Maybe just microseconds behind Dan Cave. What a great result. 19 years old, wow, that was incredible. What does, what do you do to get so good at that? Um, you just gotta commit to it. Um, if you get it stuck on your knee, it's over. So you really just have to throw everything into it and hope it goes over. <laughs> You don't actually look that much out of breath in comparison to others. Is your fitness more superior? Well, after a few good strongest man, I lost about seven kilo in body weight, so I feel a little bit uh, more agile than I used to. Yeah. Well, go and get yourself a nice drink and we'll see you in the next event. Cheers, well thank done. You. Cheers. So moving on, Andy Flynn currently second. Just two points off Paul Smith. And Mason Fessy, he's impressed me so far, considering he's a newcomer to the sport, he's putting in a pretty solid performance. So Andy Flynn, you can see already how fast he is. Nice rhythm. Knows what he's got to do if he wants to secure a top spot. At the moment, it's Dan Cave winning just ahead of Joe Oliver, both men finishing just under the 75 second time limit. But Andy Flynn now actually starting to struggle. He's normally very, very good at the tyre flip. He's won this on many, many occasion. But for some reason, he really is finding this very, very difficult. And it's not like Andy Flynn at all. Mason Fessy possibly closing in on him. Still some time to go for Andy Flynn, though. A 
I'll tell you what, he's overcome that bump and started to get back into it. He was really struggling with the final turn at the 45 degree angle, but now could well finish this event. Whatever happens, he's gonna be right back up in the points, which is what he needs to do if he's gonna win this title this year of England's strongest man. One more flip. Oh, that was again. <laughs> Look at him. Collapses on the floor. You can see how much it took out of him. The last lift before you finished looked like you had to dig into a former life. Yeah. How was that for you? Um, I had to be a bit aware as well of biceps. Because I got it and I was like, I'm not getting injured. So I was like, probably a bit dubious. But... I couldn't dig my chest into it. It's like quite a shallow dip there, so I couldn't get my whole chest into it, so it's hard to get it up the floor. So it took a lot of effort to get it up, but that's all right, I'm happy with that. In comparison to other tyres that you've done before, is this very different? Yeah, I've never had it with such a big tread. Usually I'm able to get my chest into it, so I can use my whole body to get it up. But this was all legs, yeah. so it just zapped me. Well, looking very focused indeed. Currently third and in the battle for the title, Lewis Packham. And Paul Smith will be no stranger to the tyre flip. Should be a very, very good heat here. You know what the target is? It's finishing the 30 metre course in just under 75 seconds. Anything under 74 seconds would be a first place. And it's Lewis Packham who's got the edge on Paul Smith, who for some reason is really struggling there. Well, you heard Andy Flynn say it's a different tyre to what they're used to. So sometimes you can see the huge grip at the edge there, which really makes it difficult to get the chest into. And as he said, it's all legs, so they can't use the upper part of their body like they normally would, which makes it so taxing. And that's why you've seen the guys so out of breath. It's a really cardio-heavy event. But Paul Smith now making a bit of headway and closing in on Lewis Packham. He's going to want to finish above Lewis Packham just to hold off the threat for the title. Packham at the moment, just one flip ahead of Paul Smith and getting closer, but time is running out. Is he going to get it over? And it's always that last flip where they struggle and the whistle goes. And once again, Lewis Packham just misses out on finishing an event thanks to the clock. Well, no, uh, that's the first time I've, I've done very well on a tyre flip, so I've been working hard at all my events. This event was put in last minute. I was a bit worried, but he's the benchmark. As long as I'm near him or in front of him, I know I'm having a good comp, so. And what do you think about your performance there, Paul? Not great, not terrible. I, uh, it took me a while to get the hang with the grips of it, and I got there towards the middle, but it was just too late and Lewis had got too far ahead. Well, the scores on the board look like you're both in the top three at the moment. It's all to play for, so uh, go and have a drink and we'll see you in the next event. Thank you very much. Well, three events down and two to go, and all the favourites are still in the running. Let's just have a look at the results of the Monster Tire Flip. Well, tight seventh place, Josh Norton, Dan Hewson and Ellis Vine split the points there just ahead of Dean Evans and Joe Bromley and John Ford in joint last place with two metres. But at the top of the leaderboard, Dan Cave takes the win just ahead of Joe Oliver. And interestingly, the top three overall, Paul Smith, Lewis Packham and Andrew Flynn tie third. Well, what does that mean on the overall leaderboard? Well, Josh Norton, 21 points, currently sixth overall, just ahead of Ellis Vine, Joe Bromley and John Ford, 11th and 12th respectively. Well, at the top of the leaderboard, Dan Cave, his fantastic win there puts him up to fourth place, 24 points. But look at that, just three points separating the top three. Paul Smith still in front.
Well, all 12 athletes successfully lifted the opening weight of 300 kilograms and promptly did the same at 320. The weight then moved up to 340 kilograms, where Joe Oliver and Joe Bromley both failed. At 360, it was the turn of Mason Fessy, Josh Norton and John Ford to bow out of the competition, and that left just seven men, the weight now at 380 kilograms. So Dean Evans now first man up at 380 kilograms. And for the statisticians amongst you, he's already done four lifts, totaling 1,320 kilograms. So it's a hard day in the office. 380. Oh, he makes it look easy. Well, Dan Hewson looking very comfortable and I think he'll be very happy to be coming in at 380 kilograms alongside him, Ellis Vine. It's a big weight, it's a world-class weight. So anyone lifting around these levels uh, is a, really is an elite athlete. <laughs> he started laughing as he tried to lift it. So no lift for both guys. Andy Flynn. As we mentioned earlier, not the strongest statically. Lewis Packham, but it is a real battle here. Both want that title. They're both very, very close to Paul Smith, so a good pull here is going to be essential. No. No. There's a lot of guys failing at 380. They'll be splitting the points, though, so nothing changes between these two. And now Paul Smith looking to ensure that he puts a little bit of daylight between himself and Lewis Packham and Andy Flynn. So then, what can Paul Smith do here? Both men be looking pretty comfortable, although Paul Smith struggled in the previous weight. And Dan Cave doesn't waste any time, rips it up. And Paul Smith just looking to try and getting the angle, leading back, trying to drive it up his thighs. It's not going to happen. Oh. Unbelievable. Same weight as Flynn and Packham. So the top three still stay the same, but Dan Cave, I tell you what, he's making a very, very strong finish to this competition. So then, 400 kilograms. Two men left. So then, the final weight, or is it? If both men successfully lift, the weight will go up, but 400 kilograms. Could be too much for one of them. Dean Evans on your left, just getting strapped in. Dan Cave on your right, who looks so good at 380 kilograms. Dean Evans says he's set and getting roared on by the strongmen watching on because this is pretty special. 400 kilograms and Dan Cave fails. But Dean Evans makes it look easy and takes the win. That was a special lift indeed. And I tell you what, he had more in the tank. Well, he was a last-minute replacement, and I think it's all been worth it. A 400-kilo deadlift is a feat of strength on its own, but in competition... No Sue. No Sue, absolutely massive, That's massive. 380 as well. Phenomenal lift on. Nearly got the 400. He's been smashing it all day. I'm not going to say I was taking it easy, but... Phenomenal. Everyone's phenomenal. So, yeah. Was it? Are you happy with that result? Uh, 400. Uh, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy to be breathing. I'm happy to be alive, and I'm, I'm happy for everyone to be here. Fantastic day. You've done, that was just absolutely amazing yeah. to watch. And you're 380. You must be chuffed with 380. I'm happy I pulled it um, two, two, three weeks ago in training. I peaked to pull a 400. Would have been a PB for us today. Events beforehand, it kind fast. of knocked us off. It was fast. Bang, 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 bang. I think you see, I think you see them at 10 minutes rest. You probably could have done it, yeah. yeah. But to do like bang, 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 it's tough. Um, I've just got a bit more experience, that's all it was today. Yeah. Well, how is your back feeling towards going to the Stones? Oh, I'm just going to do the first one, way longer. <laughs> Spoiler! And your back, how is it uh, feeling? My back's fine, I've got a hamstring tear, which is a little oh. bit tight. Um, Easy to change for the wind, so you've got to go for it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be going all out, I'll be making whatever points I've got there. Go and get your back rested, get some DP on it. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Thank you. 
Well then, the overall results, it's going to be interesting to see what happens at the top, but Dan Hewson, brilliant third place, 380 kilograms for him. And it's Dean Evans who picks up the maximum 12 points, just ahead of Dan Cave, Paul Smith, Andrew Flynn and Lewis Packham, all on 380 kilograms alongside Ellis Vine. So the leaderboard, after four events, just one event to go. Joe Oliver still remaining in seventh place with 23 and a half points. Dean Evans just did himself some good favours there, moves himself up to eighth. But look at the top, Paul Smith on 42 points ahead of Andrew Flynn, who's one point ahead of Lewis Packham. And Dan Cave has gone roaring up the table and is now fighting for podium. So then this final event, the Stones of Strength, or the Atlas Stones as it's known. There's five stones ranging from 100 to 160 kilograms that need to be lifted onto those whiskey barrels. Josh Norton against Ellis Vine, the first heat out. They'll be sprinting down to the end and working their way back up. It's the largest stone in the foreground that you can see. First one much smaller, almost like a marble to a strong man. No problem at all, 100 kilograms, that is fine. And Josh Norton just neck and neck. And again, the second one, 115 kilograms, goes up easily. You'll see they've got this tape and tacky on their arms to give them the grip. Without that, they've got no chance of lifting the stones, but both guys going really well. And that is fine. To get the 145 up so quickly, under 30 seconds, is a really, really good performance. Not many men get the final stone up. It's so wide. If you've got short arms, it's a really, really difficult thing to lift. And Josh Norton, well, he's just grinding to a halt now. Just see him leaning back there, just trying to give his back a little bit of a stretch. He's just got to roll that up. You can see his hands are sliding. The tacky's not quite doing the job that he was hoping it would do. Only 10 seconds left, less than that. And Josh Norton will have notched up three stones. Good performance for Ellis Vine, he set the marker. Well, this will be a good battle because Dan Cave will be looking to score highly in a bid to try and take that podium position away, possibly from Lewis Packham, who's currently third. Lewis Packham, all he's going to want to do is make sure that he stays ahead of Dan Cave. So both athletes running down to the first stone, 75 seconds, remember, and it's Lewis Packham who's just marginally ahead, moves on nice and quickly, quick on his feet. Dan Cave following, but it's all going to be down to what happens towards the end. The first stones are pretty easy by strongmen standards, and Lewis Packham is absolutely ripping through it. Gets up the 145. Dan Cave closing in on him. Again, Dan Cave just struggling there, as is Lewis Packham. You can see, look at the stickiness there as he just tries to reset it and moves that gum like substance. It's not happening for Dan Cave, and it's not happening for Lewis Packham either. You can see he's just saying, well, Taki's not, not getting to grips with this stone. Oh, dear. Frustration for Lewis Packham, who knows that if he could lift the fifth stone, he really could be in with a shout of the title. But with Andy Flynn and Paul Smith still to go, I'm not so sure that is any longer a possibility. Now, if Dan Cave can get the final stone up, he's only got five seconds to do it, he would beat Lewis Packham. But the whistle goes. No, both men blaming equipment failure.
Well, this is going to be interesting. It's the man who's currently second, Andrew Flynn, 38 points. And alongside him, UK's strongest man and looking for his second title and two points ahead of him, Paul Smith. This is going to get interesting. Look at Paul Smith's hand twitching, raring to go. Well, it's Flynn who got there first. And he is absolutely flying through it. As you would expect, three stones up. Paul Smith still going strong, not as quick as Andy Flynn. Andy Flynn needs to finish in front of Paul Smith. If he does, he may just have won the title. Paul Smith gets the fourth stone up. And Andy Flynn, look how he rolled that onto his knees, effortlessly gets it up. And I tell you what, things could just have changed dramatically for Paul Smith. He absolutely has to get this up. He must get it up. If he doesn't, this title may have just slipped away from him. Well, no one knows what's going on here. Has Paul Smith retained his title? Andy Flynn, by taking the win on this event, has put himself into a really strong position. It's all going to be down to timings. Well, let's look at the results of the Atlas Stones, and it's Joe Oliver. He's always seventh, isn't he? 38.52, stone number four for him. Dan Cave also successful on stone four. Well, at the top of the leaderboard, no surprises. Andy Flynn took the win ahead of Paul Smith. Joe Bromley in third and Lewis Packham in fourth. The question is, who's won the title? Well, they're holding hands. It's a sign of unity as they wait for the official scores to come up. They're looking at the scoreboard. No one knows who's won the title. Is it Flynn or is it Smith? It's Paul Smith. <laughs> It's Paul Smith who's managed to stay in the lead and take the title of England's strongest man. Incredible. Poor Andy Flynn. He gave it absolutely everything, as did Lewis Packham. What a competition. Well, two titles in one year. And there is confirmation of the final leaderboard. Mason Fessy and Josh Norton tied on 28 points ahead of Dean Evans. What a great deadlift from him. And at the top of the leaderboard, it was Paul Smith who took the win by just one point over Andy Flynn. Well, he explains how important that last Atlas Stone was. Oh, it was crucial. I know Flynn was ahead. I had a little buff first. I'd take my time and make sure I get it up. If it didn't go up, it would probably be bad news, but just about did it. It's been incredible this year, you know, I've had wins isolated over the years, but this year everything seems to have clicked. Won England's again, but obviously winning the big one UK's as well, all in one year, it's been brilliant. Had a really good run of comps and feeling really good. Now I remember 2020 when we did it in, in a gym, literally in a gym, no fans, no one's allowed there. And it, it just felt like a training session with your mates, like you just lost all the prestige, but to be back now in a big arena in a Super League stadium, 2,000 fans, it's amazing, you know. So lucky to have all the arena shows uh, with Strongman now, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. So Paul Smith lifts the title of England's Strongest Man, this part of the UK's Strongest Man Tour. We hope you have enjoyed it as much as we have. Goodbye. <laughs>